Hey everybody, I'm Luca Paris and I'm taking you on a culinary journey. So a culinary journey came to me because I want to do a show on what to eat during cancer treatments. A friend of mine brought me the book, it's from the American Cancer Society, and it has some interesting facts and ideas that you need to know about if you're going through treatment and how to eat better and how to eat great things and what can help you. I thought it was an interesting idea for a show and I thought let's go with it. We're going to make this blueberry smoothie, we're going to do a tuna melt, like a tuna casserole melt, and we're going to do a tilapia dish. Three great dishes you could cook anytime. And we have a great guest, Peter Rose, he's a cancer survivor, he's going to help me out. We're going to talk a little bit about what you need to know. And that's just about it. Here's the book, here's the set, we're ready to go, and your culinary journey starts now. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome back to A Culinary Journey. I'm here with Peter Rose. Peter, how's it going? Good. It's great to have you Great to be show. here. Hey, we're going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to start off making a smoothie. Okay. Is that exciting? You're, sure. You're, you're, are you <laughs> that excited? <laughs> everybody catch the name Peter Rose? Now I know why people might want your autograph. Yeah. Yeah. See? I That's sell it at the end of the show. You do? Yeah. <laughs> you sign cards and yeah. everything? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> well, Peter, what we're going to do is make a couple of dishes that come from the cookbook, What to Eat During Cancer Treatment. You went through treatment yourself, right? Yes, I did. And how many years ago was that now? Uh, I've been off treatment for two years now. That's awesome. That's congratulations on that. That's exciting. And uh, did, did, is it because, what, needing, needing to know what to eat, is it because it affects you differently or affects people differently? Yeah, it's, it's not only the cancer, it's the treatments themselves, the chemo treatments that mess with your appetite and mess with what you can eat. Right. And, and it changes everything from flavors changing? Yes, uh, a time. lot of people have nothing but a metal taste in their mouth. Right. I was fortunate that I didn't have that. I, I had other things. A lot of my tastes changed. Right. Things that I used to like, I don't like so much anymore. Right. Things that I never liked before, I think are pretty good now. Wow. So. <laughs> it all gets better. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> So have you done any smoothies or anything like that? When I did some while I was under treatment. Now, is it uh, doing the smoothies get you a lot of nutrition? And, and it's, it's for the nutrition, and, and it's easy on your mouth, and right. you have to watch things. And some people don't really even want to eat, right? But they right. have to. Right, right. I mean, a lot of, the, a lot of appetite, it, it's almost an appetite suppressant where it right. takes away a lot. Right, right. Okay. So what we're going to do is make a quick smoothie here. So this has bananas, blueberries, and a little bit of raspberry in it. We're going to do... A little bit of uh, yogurt that has some more blueberry in it. Honey and cinnamon and milk. Sounds good? Yeah. All right. So you're in charge of making sure the blender works. And uh, I can do you, that, I think. Yeah. You think? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this in here. I'm and not really is, a cook, but, you know. And what's great about it, <laughs> neither am I. Trust me on this one. <laughs> Look, we're making a smoothie. It's not like we're using fire or anything. So we got, we got that in. We got the bananas. We got the blueberries. Can we put a little bit of that milk in there for me? Sure. Just a little bit. Not too much. Oh, oh, that's in Oh, no, a little more than a that. A little more? No, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh, a little bit more. What do you think? You think that's good? Oh, let's yeah. stop right there. And then maybe a couple of tables, teaspoons of honey. If we could do that. Want me to just guess or you want yeah, me to Yeah, no, you guess. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine now. Yeah, let's just do uh, that. Yeah, there you go. You're not really guessing. Yes, you are. Now you're guessing. There you go. Great job. And then we'll do a pinch of cinnamon. Right? This is really, I mean, this is amazing to have for breakfast anytime, not a long... Yes. You know, I mean, this is a great thing. Let's put the cover back on, see if it works. You give it a good shot. Ooh. Oh, we need yogurt, too. Let's put some yogurt in there. Okay, we'll blend it up just a little bit. We're going to put in some blueberry yogurt to finish that off. And nice. He's taking care of that. You know, smoothies are great. It's a great way to have a breakfast any time of the week. 
Uh, it's a quick way to get all your nutrients in there. And it's also kind of fancy. If we had some vodka, we really could make this a good show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew Peter would be into that, would it, didn't you? What do you think? We're good to go? Beautiful. Yeah. Looks like our first dish is done. Voila. Do you, you, you do like smoothies, right, Peter? You sure. Say? Okay, good. Because I have never had a blueberry smoothie before. Wow, this looks good. Look how yummy that is. Here. I think it'd be better yours. with a little bourbon. But. Bourbon? Yeah. On our next <laughs> segment, we'll be adding bourbon to this. <laughs> I'm going to eat mine this way. We'll do uh, cheers, Peter. This is our first one. Very quick opening segment. Excellent, nutritious, good for you. Peter, is this good for, um, I mean, for again, we talked about people that didn't have an appetite. They get all the nutrients in one shot. Uh, did, it also helps people that have mouth issues when they're yes, going Yes, sometimes treatment. you'll experience some mouth issues, right. and, and, and this will help relieve, and it is something you can eat, Might and it goes down easily. Okay, well, we're going to have our blueberry... Um, what is this called again? Smoothie. Smoothie, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, smoothie, and we'll be right back. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> I tell you, this is all for you, Peter. I never get Gotta be. Of, I never get applause <laughs> like this. The cookbook today, Peter, we're talking about is what to eat during cancer treatment. And one of the cool things about this book is when you, you flip right at the beginning, there's an index that tells you, because there are, we talked about it a little bit when we were having our smoothie, there are, little, there are differences that it affects people during treatment. And it's, they're either affected by flavor differences or mouth yes. issues or weight issues or what have you. And then right in here, in the book itself, it has these little, you know, N is for nausea, uh, C is for constipation, the TAs, taste alterations, and then you just go to the re recipes and you follow it that way. Right. Did you use some of the recipes out of this book? Yeah, I did a, a couple of them, yeah. Right. So cool. And then you get to work it out that way. And to this next recipe we're going to be making is a tuna melt. And one of the things was for people who need to eat but don't want a big sandwich, how do you do it? Well, we use a tuna melt and we make it nice and easy. And this is quick. Right. Yeah. And you're going to help me out. Okay. You ready? Sure. He's so talkative. <laughs> We should have added the bourbon in the last part. Though. We really would have went. All right, Peter, this is what you're going to do for me. In that pan, or in this, in this, I want you to mix some of the tuna. Put that tuna in there. Okay. In there. In the bowl. Back in the bowl. There you go. We're going to add a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of Dijon mustard, and a little bit of pickle relish. Just give it some flavor. Mix that all up. Have fun with that. Don't drop it anywhere. He's good at this. If, While you're if doing I drop that, it, or if, uh, is the 10 second rule in yeah, yeah, that's no. it. <laughs> this is TV. We do magic <laughs> of television here. So <laughs> what I'm going to add to that to really quick is we're going to add some diced onions. So just like any quesadilla, it's kind of mixing the world of the quesadilla together with the world of the tuna melt. And we're going to add our toppings to our quesadilla, which is a little diced red onion. And I got to show you, do you, you like my cutting board? Yes. Isn't that Beautiful. awesome? It's made by Ideal Board right here in Keene. It's just an awesome, awesome board. And there's enough room for both of us. Yeah. How's that case deal? And I need a lot of room. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> so the, gaining weight is an important issue. So some of the issues in the book kind of relate to that. They, they talk about um, weight gain and even weight loss. I guess that both, again, affecting people differently. You have weight loss, you have weight gain. But what were some of the things that affected you? Did you have any weight? losses that you uh, I had small weight loss okay uh, I had loss of appetite a lot but I forced myself to eat at times yeah, so I didn't have a a lot of weight loss right and that's what I do all the time I force myself I to still eat. do yeah, and yeah. it shows <laughs> this is why we need a big board <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> cool so uh, and then for those people who this dish especially if you go under um, under the recipe in here, it basically says for people who don't have this desire to eat or can't right. force down a big sandwich, it gives them an alternative and still gets them protein and flavors and whatnot. Yeah, it's, 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 I guess it's kind of your eyes full in your belly, you know. Exactly, exactly. Makes it look like it's just a little bit, but it is plenty enough to fill you up. All right, so in the recipe, 
that you have in the book, it tells you to just pop this all in the microwave. I want to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to do a quesadilla. It's something my daughter and I do all the time, too. We make quesadillas at home. And it's real simple. What I'm going to do is put some oil in the pan, just lightly, because we're just going to coat it lightly and get the pan nice and hot. And if you can get half of this covered, half of this uh, wheat tortilla yep. wrap covered with a, a, a thin layer of the tuna while I get the pan going. There we go. Get that up on high. All right. You're my new sous chef. You know that, right? No. No? <laughs> Not really. You like to cook. Yeah, I like to cook. Uh, you, but... you know, tell everybody what you do. You do something really sweet for the nurses that used to take care of you. I, uh, I, I started while I was going through treatments. Every two weeks when I went in for treatment, I took baked goods to the nurses because I think that they deserve something back from someone. Uh, so... I haven't been in treatment for quite some time, but I still go down, not as regularly, but I still do go every two to three weeks, and I bring them baked goods of some kind. That's pretty awesome. That's a wonderful thing. So what I did, and let me just show you again, so in case you didn't see it, I put the red onions on, and I also put the cheese. That's our tuna melt. We're going we're gonna to just press that down. I'm going to get that into our hot pan. I'm going to let that sizzle. Now, what's the... What's the amount of treatment time. Does it vary on everybody too? It varies or? on everyone. Uh, in it, the amount of time you spend in each treatment varies. It, it depends on which one of the chemo drugs you're getting or which cocktail of chemo drugs you're getting. Right, right. That determines how long it is and, and what you go through. Right. So let's get, let's flip this over real quick. We're going to make sure this, where is my spatula? Oh, I got a brand new spatula. I love all the stuff on my yeah. show, yeah. I have way too much fun. <laughs> We're just going to get a little sear on one side. And Peter, if you want to grab me a plate from behind us. This is why I have guests, because I'm too lazy to turn around and get it myself. But here we go. We're going to get a little sear on one side of the quesadilla. And I'm going to flip it over, get a sear on the other side. The cheese is going to melt in there. See the size of that plate compared to my quesadilla? Well, I'm new here. <laughs> You and me both. No, that's we could take, take oh, a rectangle I, one. <laughs> I just got a stagehand directing me over here. I don't oh, know where okay, to go now. <laughs> there you go. You're good. <laughs> okay, warm it up on either <laughs> side. And voila, this is our second dish. When we come back, what we're going to do is make this tilapia dish. Look how good this looks. Oh, tuna melt. I, this is one of... This is why I wanted to do this one, is because I've never made a tuna melt as a quesadilla before, and I just think it's the coolest thing now. Now this one's almost too big. Peter, it's one what thing do you I want with you. What do you want? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> What'd you think? Very good. Easy enough? Easy enough. Put anything in there. We could do, oh, a chicken. Yeah. Do a chicken melt. Right. A lot of ideas coming on this show. Don't go away, because when we come back, we're going to be making tilapia. Peter's going to help me out with that. It's a little bit of citrus. Now, that's one of the things... It gives you this, this added flavor, but it, it tells you in the book, what's great about it, it tells you in the book, this might be, not be something you want if you have a certain ailment or a certain uh, repercussion from the, right. from the effect or effect, and, but it'll tell you if you use it for another. So there's a lot of interesting things in the cookbook. The cookbook's called What to Eat During Cancer Treatment. Peter Rose is my guest. Don't go away because we're going to come back with more. About them. <laughs> you bring them everywhere. I'm back with Peter Rose. He's here with me. We're talking about what to eat during cancer treatment. We came up with a couple of uh, great dishes. We did the blueberry, what's it called? Smoothie. Thank you. This is why you're on. <laughs> blueberry smoothie. And then we did a tuna quesadilla, which everyone loved. Right, guys? Did you love it? Yeah. yeah it was they all come awesome. just for the food, right? That's, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't pay anybody either. I just feed them. <laughs> last thing we're gonna make. Last thing we're gonna make is a tilapia dish. Uh, tilapia is a white fish that it doesn't look very white, almost pinkish. But it's great. It's great fish because it takes on all the flavors of the sauce around it. It's like an empty uh, board where you can just paint whatever you want onto it. So we're gonna give it flavor. It's a great fish to work with. It's quick. It's fast. And I think that's another thing too because the book is is uh, directed at. Of course, the people that are going through the treatment, but also the caregivers 
And they don't, but, I mean, there's so much time and energy used up in everything else. The caregivers have to give up a lot of their own time to take care of the patient. Right. Uh, and anything that speeds up things for them, right. and if they can get a meal together quickly when they come home from work or whatever, it, it helps a lot. Right. So these, and the book is great with these, these quick recipes. I mean, you saw just two things that were just bam, bam, bam. We did it in right. no time. And, and even if you don't have a caregiver or you're home by yourself and you don't have all the energy that you need to create a big right. meal. Right. It's still easy enough to do like these quesadillas that we just did. Right. I mean, it's a very simple dish. Not a lot of energy expanded. Right. So. And great food. Perfect. So now let's make this last one. I need you to get a little salt and pepper into that flour. I'm going to get oil in the pan. There you go. A little bit more. Yep. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I ask people to do things and I always end up doing it too. Well, why don't you I'm the same way. <laughs> why don't you dredge a couple of the, and, and basically what we're going to take is the tilapia. We're going to put in a little flour. One, two things it's going to do. It's going to help protect the fish when it's cooking. And the other thing, when, uh, when we're cooking, that flour is going to help us create a sauce because it's going to be part of our thickening agent. And what I'm going to do is get some oranges ready because we're going to make some fresh squeezed orange juice right into our sauce. It's a citrus tilapia, perfect. I'll take care of that from here. Citrus tilapia, where we're gonna sear one side of the tilapia. And this is a fish that cooks really quickly. It's quicker than most other fish because it's really thin. Um, by the time we're done with this whole sauce, the fish will be ready to go. So I'll add a little bit more salt and pepper because we season. I use a kosher salt. Do you ever use kosher salt? Yes. Tom? And that's the best salt to cook with because Kosher salt adds or enhances the flavors around it again. It doesn't make things salty, and that's, that's really important. A lot of people use this iodized salt, and if you put just a pinch too much, it's going to make things salty. So go with kosher salt. Best way to go. All right, we're going to sear this on one side. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to start letting it cook on the other side. This is a slippery little... There we go. <laughs> Let's get it up on a higher heat. Higher heat. What I'm going to need from you, we'll get this out of the way. What I'm going to need from you to do is zest me some lemons. Okay. So you need your zester. All right. Peter's quickly becoming totally uh, the, the assistant chef I've always wanted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make orange he juice. He doesn't want much, though. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to take, take this. We're going to put some, oh, we're going to reduce some oranges in here. To make a nice quick orange juice. This is something you could do ahead of time or you could use really good orange juice if you don't want to put fresh oranges in. Uh, make sure it's not concentrate. Concentrate uh, doesn't have the, the acidity you want like you get from fresh squeezed orange juice. Oh, it smells so good already. Oh wait, I got my own little garbage can. Did you check out my little garbage thing right there? Yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, I need they, one thought of those. Of, they thought of everything. The guy who designed this from uh, Vermont Cabinetry is a good friend of mine, and he just thought of anything. He says, where do you want your garbage? I go, right there, <laughs> because then Lee gets mad that I've come off camera. So, <laughs> so, all right. So how are we doing with the zest? Nice. You are good. Hey. This is fun. I can't do much, but I can do a little bit every <laughs> once in a while. All right, I'm going to have some orange pieces in there, too, because I'm going to scoop them out. See how nice and clean that's getting? And the fish is cooking at the same time. What I like to do is do one pan dishes. Again, that too, is the cleanup is important. Yes. Too. I mean, the more you have to clean up, just the harder it's going to be to, to do anything. We have the oranges. We've got that nice smell in there. And you have the lemon zest. I think we're good with lemon zest, yeah? I'm going to chop that up really quickly. And we're going to add the lemon zest. Now, one of the things when you're zesting a lemon is really important is not to go past this white part that's right here. That's called the pith. That's really bitter. You're getting all the essential oils and flavors from the lemon when you're doing the zesting of the outer part. So we're going to add that in there. And the final thing we're going to do to this dish is we're going to put a little bit of fresh ginger. You ever used ginger before? Not fresh ginger, no. Not fresh ginger? No. Fresh ginger is wonderful. Now, most people are scared because when you look at a thing of ginger, it looks like one of those horseradish yeah. things. It looks like tree bark, yeah. basically. But fresh ginger is great because... Uh, here, here's the thing. Most people won't get it because they don't know how to hold it. Take this ginger just the way it is. You cut off the piece that you need, right? The rest of it, put it in a plastic baggie, throw it in the freezer. It'll last you for as long as you need. Because that way, 
you'll have fresh ginger all the time. And we're just going to grate some fresh ginger right over the top. Now what I need is just a little butter to finish this off. Just a little. Does that sound like a little, look like a little bit? That looks like a little bit to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just put a little bit of butter. <laughs> and that's going to help us finish our sauce. It's going to give us a little more uh, depth to our sauce. And we'll turn that back on, hopefully. Oh, look at that. It turned on. That doesn't, <laughs> you've noticed that doesn't yeah. happen all the time on this. <laughs> all right. So we'll save this for another time. You do the same thing. If you, and I said it looked like horseradish. You can do the same thing with horseradish, where you take it and you use what you need, and then you'll always have fresh horseradish. It just has so much more flavor than using the frozen variety. So you get the plate. You know where it is? I think so. Let's see how we do with it his plate design today. I'm going to get a little bit of parsley. I'm going to chop that up. So Peter, do you have any, any words of encouragement or any words that we want to offer to people that are watching this, might be going through treatment, or just some thoughts about eating, or is something you want to give to them? Uh, I, I think that while you're going through treatment, if, if you are someone who is, is experienced, one of the big things is, is you naturally, you have to eat. No matter what, you have to eat, and you have to make sure that you eat. It's extremely important. It helps you with fighting the disease. Uh, the other thing is to keep your morale up. Keep, just keep plugging on, and you have to keep a positive attitude. Like that, in a lot of ways, is one of your biggest... I think so. I, I think uh, your caregivers and any prayers that are given to you and your positive attitude is what gets you through it and keeps you going. No, oh, that was beautiful. I'm, I'm honored to have you on my show today. This is one of my favorite shows I've done. I hope it helps a couple of people. I think we have a really nice dish right there. It's very you, nice. You helped me out with that. Peter, thank, thank you, sir. You. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Best of luck and best of luck to everyone out there. This is a great tilapia dish. Uh, with the book, it's called What to Eat During Cancer Treatment. Pick it up. It's from the American Cancer Society. You can go online to get it. If you're a caregiver or you're going through treatment yourself, please pick up this book. It'll help you. Again, positive attitude. Eat well. Listen to your doctors. Not that you listen to all your doctors, but well, it still worked out to you. You have to be your, <laughs> you have to be your own best advocate. Exactly. And, and you definitely were. And congratulations to you, Peter. Again, an honor to have you on. And I uh, hope you had a good time on today's show. We'll see you next time on A Culinary Journey.